Greetings everyone, I have just come back from the gym and my arms feel like jelly, so I thought I'd take a second to make a video about my new favorite show that I'm addicted to watching. Like the last month I've just been binge watching uh, The Traitors, which is kind of like the old show The Survivor, or just Survivor. I never got into Survivor. Never really liked reality shows like Big Brother, Amazing Race, any of those kind of shows. Especially because, like, at the time Survivor came out, I was really into actual survival shows. Like, uh, the ones where people survive in Alaska and naked and afraid and that kind of stuff. Like, real survival kind of stuff. So, I always thought it was kind of stupid. All the celebrity culture around it especially is kind of stupid. But The Traitors uh, is kind of more like this game me and Hashim used to play. What is it called? Um... Town of Salem. Let me get a picture. So you had like, like all these people that get around in a circle and they vote people out every night. Um, so it looks like this. Uh, this is the game we used to play. It's also a game called Mafia and a game called Werewolf or something like that. I've never played those, but it's supposed to be similar to this. Also, it's very similar to Among Us. So they pick three or four traders depending on which version you're watching. Because there's like a UK version, which is two seasons so far. There's a US version, which is on season two right now. There's a Canadian version, which has one season. There's a New Zealand version, which has one season. And then there's an Australian version, which has two seasons. So, so far, I've seen the first US one, both of the UK ones, the Canadian one, and the first Australian one. So, <laughs> I've seen a lot in the like, last month or so. I've just been binging this show. I even watched a couple seasons twice because I watched it with my mom and we're over there. So, they're mostly the same, but they're a little different. The U.S. and the and the U.K. version both take place in Scotland in this big cool castle. But then the Canadian one is like produced by a different company, so it's kind of makes it look a little smaller. Everything's a little closer and tighter in because they're in a different, like a hotel or whatever. And the same in uh, the Australian one. It's not that big a deal about like where they're at. They're not like, uh, it's supposed to be like enjoying themselves and being at this big house, like Big Brother or whatever house. So you don't want to get voted off even if you're not winning the money or whatever, right? So, and the rules are mostly the same, but Australia was a little different. Like, they have these things they can win called shields, which prevents you from getting killed at night. But in the Australian version, it also prevents you from being banished at the end of the day. So you start out with like 24, 5 people, maybe 30 people depending I think and then like every night somebody gets banished and then the traitors kill somebody so you strategically pick who is this most likely to find out you're a traitor or like the biggest threat and you kill them off and then everybody else that's a faithful is what they call them they try to figure out who the traitors are and banish them off so at the early game you're not very likely to be picked by the banishment unless you do something really stupid so a lot of the cooler, more interesting people get voted off early, and the people that just kind of sit back and watch and don't say anything tend to make it to the end. Like, I was watching, I was like four or five episodes deep in the Australian version, and there's this man appeared, and I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? I can't remember seeing him before. <laughs> I can't remember him at all. He was so quiet, he's like so under the radar, like I didn't even re realize he was there. And there's so many twists and turns and plot twists, like, I don't know if they're, some of it's on purpose, some of it's, like, rule changes. So, one night they'll pick, you don't kill anybody, but you put three people on trial to be killed the next night. So that they're freaking out all day long when they're doing these missions. Just like Survivor, you gotta do these missions to, like, earn the money that at the end, either the faithfuls will split it or the traitors will steal it and take it off. So, I wish they would kind of cut the missions out. Or do it differently because there's another show that Hulu produces called The Trust, a game of greed. And it's like you just start out with all the money and all the people can just say, we don't vote anybody out and we all want to split it. And at the end of the show, they'll split the money. But then there wouldn't be a show because it wouldn't be very interesting. So people are always trying to like reduce the number of people so that they get more money. And they also like send them to this vault where they can make a greedy choice for themselves or a team choice for the team. But like, they don't know what they're doing on that show. Because <laughs> if if you read the rules right, it says you can 
take extra money if you vote some if somebody is voted off. It doesn't say you have to vote them off, or you can like get more money for the group if you two people vote for the if you and another guy vote for the same person or something like that. I don't know. It's like the more neutral one will be the greedy choice sometimes. I've only seen like three episodes of that. But let me just go through the different versions and tell you which ones I think are the best. The UK version is probably the most drama and like the best show. The first, I watched the second season first, the first season second. So the fir- the second season ended really well. I don't want to spoil anything if you want to watch the show, but the endings can be real tricky because... If you have two traitors and two faithfuls at the end, which happens in one of the shows, one of the yeah, one of the versions, it's kind of like a prisoner's dilemma. And there's another game show called Splitter Steel, which is like a prisoner's dilemma. But somebody figured out how to cheat the system, and they said, "I'm gonna vote to steal." And they tell the other guy. Then the other guy's like, "What? You're gonna steal? Oh, oh, what is it? So I can't win." <laughs> and he's like, "They actually voted to split, so he had to vote split too, so they did split the money." Because if he voted to steal and the other vote to steal, then they, nobody takes anything. So it's kind of like a, uh, a mind fuck, right? There's so many mind fucks in this. So like, if it's two faithfuls, two traitors, if you vote the faithful off, you got two traitors and one faithful left. So the two traitors automatically win. This guy's just kind of wasting his time. The faithful is. So then it's like the two traitors are fighting amongst themselves to like get the faithful guy to vote the other traitor so that this faith, the, the other traitor can take all the money. Because if they were both, if they cooperated, both of the traitors cooperated and voted the faithful off, then they would be left and they would split it. But you can't just like leave it up to the other person and just trust that they're going to do that. So you're trying to like convince the faithful guy that the other person's a traitor and you're not. And if they lose track of like how many traitors there are, because that's the main thing. If you know, see, usually at the end of the game, you can like vote to continue banishing or vote to end the game. Now, if you're a traitor. Obviously, you want to end the game because if you end the game and a traitor's left, the traitor takes all the money. But if the faithfuls know how many traitors there are and they know there's still a traitor left, and they say, "Well, you voted to end the game," that's something only a traitor would do. Only a traitor would want to end the game knowing that there's a traitor still, because <laughs> that means that they're going to give away the money. And nobody wants to just give away the money. So obviously, if you're a traitor left, you have to vote. To banish again to make it look like you're faithful so that the real faithfuls will not think you're a traitor. <laughs> it's like so mind fucking, right? So, yeah, season two of the UK version kind of ended like they didn't count. It was one of them voted wrong, I think, because the faithful guy voted to keep banishing. No, that was right because there was still a traitor left. I don't know. I remember he voted wrong. Oh, he did. He voted for the wrong person because the traitor voted to end the game. He should have known he was a traitor because he voted to end the game, and he knew there was a traitor left, but he didn't pick up on that. So that pissed me off a little bit. And then, what was the one with the American version? Yeah, the American version. I think they just lost track of like how many traitors were still in the game, because here's the twist. They start out with three traders, except for the Australian version. I think they start with four. They start out with three. They lose one. They got two. Now they got the the option to recruit. So they ask a faithful to become a trader. And if they say no, then they don't get them. I don't know if they can keep trying to recruit if it fails. But if it gets down to one trader, then you can even ultimatum. They can say, you have to join me as a trader or you're just going to die. So then they're kind of forced to do it. So if it's a night where somebody has a shield, right? So the, the, the real clutch of this game is when the, everybody comes in in the morning and they see who died. So if somebody has a shield and they recruited a faithful that night, they go, oh, well, nobody died. I wonder if they recruited. And you say, no, I had the shield. They must have tried to kill me. So that means you don't know if they recruited or they tried to kill the faithful that had the shield that's if the traders don't know who had the shield 
Because sometimes they would do it where like the whole team could go into a room and pick boxes and one of them would get a shield and they might tell you and they might not. If they don't tell you, then it's kind of like the whole team kind of has a shield, but not really because they wouldn't want to pick somebody from that team because they may have a shield, so they'd probably pick somebody else. So in the early game, having a shield doesn't really mean anything because there's so many people to choose from. If you're a trader, it's like, well, this guy's got a shield. I don't give a fuck. I'll just pick this guy. There's so many people to pick. But if it's down to like six, five people and you get a shield and everybody's like thinking you're the trader, super helpful to have a shield. But also, having the shields in the game, like there's this one black girl that just ran off in the middle of the challenge and went to get the shield for herself, like made her look super traitory. But why would a traitor want the shield? That kind of makes her look super faithfully, too. So, there's all this kind of meta, sub-meta gaming to it. Like, if you act like you want the shield, it makes you look faithful, or it may make you look like you're trying to take it for the traitor so the faithfuls don't have a shield. Or you're trying to like overprove, or you're trying to double bluff. There's so many kind of like trickeries in this game. But I figured out a lot of ways to win if I was playing the game. One way is you watch the cameraman. Anytime they have like traitors talking to themselves, not in their trader tower where they go to like vote people off and kill them. If they're out like on a bench during the middle of the daytime. The cameraman, they will like get over a fountain or they're like peeking through a doorway or they're around a corner and they have like something in the frame, you know, to make it look like they're super spy espionage mode. So if you see like a cameraman hiding between two doors and like trying to film through a tiny crack, like, well, those must be traitors out there. Look at them. <laughs> look at this cameraman filming all weird. So that's pretty much a dead giveaway. Another thing is kind of how they react when you banish somebody if they're not surprised or if they knew it was coming but when they come in at breakfast every morning the cameraman they always like they all, at the end of the previous show they will say like oh should we kill this guy or this guy or this guy there'll be three people usually like they're thinking about killing and they'll leave it on a cliffhanger so you don't know so at the end of the the next morning everybody comes through the last three people are the three people that they were thinking about killing usually Unless it was one of those days where they put everybody on trial or death's row or whatever they call it, whatever version it is. If the traitors can put themselves on death row to make themselves look faithful, also, another twist. So if it's one of those days, they may have a faithful come in as the last three because they were on death's row. But a normal day, you come in last. Oh, am I the last person? And then you have to figure out who died. The person that says, am I the last person, that's usually a fucking faithful guy. Because it was between him and the other guy. Or the next guy that came in right before that guy. They, if you take a list, you start writing down, this guy came in last today, this guy came in last the next day, and this guy came out in the last day. You get a pretty good list of like people that are faithful. Then you get those people together and you have a voting block. You say, ah, we're going to vote this guy out today, and we're all going to vote the same. If everybody agrees, then you kind of have a lot of power. Um... So that's come some of my tricks I came up with. Uh, another trick that could work, I don't know if this would work or not. The American and the UK version, they make them take these vows where they say that you will lie and cheat and, and you will not tell who, that you're a traitor. You won't like tell other people that who the traitors are, basically. You have to like promise that you're not going to like give it away. So then, if you're faithful, you say, hey, everybody, the traitors can't say that they're traitors. So if we all say, I am a traitor, only a faithful will be able to say that. And then whoever can't say it is the traitors. And you just figure out who they are. I figure that they probably have a, a way to get around that. Anyway. So, yeah, the UK version is the best. Let me just show you some pictures of... This is some of the, the, the show here. Alan Cumming hosts the United States version. Um, so the first season of the United States, I don't really remember it, except the one crazy guy that would always come in. He was a traitor. Uh, I think it ended pretty good. Like most of the time, traitors win. I've only seen like one where the faithfuls won, I think. Um... This one, that's the American season one. Uh, yeah, this is uh, the Alan Cumming one. 
Season two I haven't seen yet, but I did hear like the last episode I think somebody was banished and then the producers canceled the banishment for some reason, like something crazy happened. So I'm super hyped about that. You also get weird situations like like the show it gets people was it season one of the U the United States and season two of the UK I think they got people that were on previous reality game shows. So you got a, a guy that was on The Bachelor, a guy that was on The Amazing Race, a woman that was on Master Chef, uh, somebody that was on uh, Big Brother, did I say that? One somebody one Survivor one time. Like all these reality shows. And then you have like a handful of people that are just like random people from different jobs. But usually they'll pick jobs that are like police officers or like detectives, magicians, um, psychics. People that there was one guy in Australia. He was like Australia's oldest, like captive, like by some traitor or like a terrorist group or something had kidnapped him for like a hundred and three hundred and sixty days or something, like almost a year or more. So he like had to learn how to make his captives want his want, want him around or something like that. So it's like he he should be able to stay in the game longer or something. And then the psychic, there was a psychic woman on the show, and she. Everybody was kind of acting like she was saying a bunch of stuff that was making all these claims she couldn't prove. Nobody believed her. And then she said, the traitors are this guy, this guy, this woman, and this woman. I've talked to my spirit guides. That's who they say they are. And then she just walks out and gets mad. And then the guy comes back and says, well, she quit the show. <laughs> I'm like, what? She just quit the show and told everybody who the, who the traitors were? And, like, two of the traders she said was right, and two of them were wrong. So it's about 50-50 chance. It's, like, regular odds. She's not psychic. Had no powers. And then the magician guy in the Canadian version, he was really good. He kept, like... If somebody says something sketchy, it, like, really gets everybody flipping out. And they start, like, having all these arguments and, like, theories. And everything gets blown out of proportion. And they're always, like, accusing all the faithfuls. And the traders just sitting there laughing most of the time. So this magician guy, he says, like, I need to tell everybody something. Uh, I'm not really a magician. So they're all waiting for him to say, like, what he was lying about. He said, no, I'm just kidding. I mean, who wants to do some card tricks? He starts, like, doing all these card tricks. He's, like, super charismatic guy. He comes in, like, setting fire to some cards one day at breakfast. Dope. Uh, there's a, the, yeah, the Australian police guy, MK or something like that. He had this, like, crazy personality and got voted off pretty early. Because he kept coming in and trying to just run the show and, like, tell everybody, like, what his theories were and all this kind of crap. Uh, there was another psychic, I think. One of the big twists I like is they, they say, tonight, the traitors are going to have to kill somebody in plain, or, like, yeah, in plain sight. So they don't tell the faithfuls that, but they're having, like, this big party. That's another thing. If you're on the show and they say, we're having a big party tonight and nobody's getting killed... Don't take food off of anybody or drinks. Don't let anybody near you and kiss you on the face or anything. Because that's either the kiss of death was one season. Another season, uh, this gay guy like gave a woman a wine glass and it was poison or something. Right? Uh, so there's all kinds of twists and things you could do to make this show more interesting too. Like if you had to kill them like during a mission, like you cut the cord and they're hanging from a helicopter or something like that. <laughs> I'm a traitor <laughs> and you're dead. I mean, uh, just my brain goes crazy thinking of all the cool shit you could do with a game like this. Um, oh, Claudia Winkleman hosts the UK version. Super, the music is amazing in the UK version. I've got the uh, soundtrack on Spotify. And she's all like spooky, like walking around with these letters where people are getting murdered with their little skinny legs and her crazy cloaks and stuff. And Alan Cummings always got this crazy gay suit on. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the ending of UK 2 was really good, but it's like, this woman got totally, like, flustered by this guy, and, like, in love with him, I almost trusted him so much, and then, the game is also evil, like, you have to, like, really backstab and lie, and just, like, be an asshole on this game if you want to win it, but then, like, at the end, like, you see all these people getting interviewed on talk shows and stuff, it's like they don't really... They get over... And this one right here, the Canadian show. Something about her is really weird. She talks like a robot sometimes. She comes in these crazy outfits. 
And it's just really wild. <coughs> what is this? I don't recognize any of these people. Is this like a season two? Maybe I do. There was like a trans guy on there. Um, he was on Drag Race. He was like one of those people. Um, who's this guy? Oh, Anthony. Yeah. Anthony. The UK season one? This woman comes on and she says, I suspect Anthony because we at the beginning of the show they had us all line up and he I was wanting to get they wanted us to like line up between who you think is gonna win and who you think is gonna lose. And she wanted to get in the middle and Anthony like wouldn't let her or something, so she's real suspicious of him. And I'm like, What do you mean you're suspicious of him? They hadn't even chosen who the traitors were at that point. You just got to the castle. They hadn't even picked them yet. So how would that be traitor behavior? But she got on his ass for like three or four episodes. Like, what are you basing this on? It happened before the show started. You just hate black people. And then you find out she's the mother of another contestant. Like, he's her son. So then she's the one that got poisoned by the wine glass, by the way. Ah, that's a little bit of a spoiler. So then, like, season two, instead of having a mother and a son, they had a boyfriend and a girlfriend. And that was the best, let's see, was that the, I think I had my mom and dad watch season one. Season two was the good one. Anyway, the boyfriend and girlfriend don't tell anybody that they're in a relationship. So this other guy gets a massive crush on the girl that has a boyfriend, but they won't tell anybody. So he's telling everybody, oh, I'm going to marry this girl someday. I can't, I'm just like so excited. I have anybody like her. And, uh, this might be my future wife. The whole time her boyfriend is right there, like watching him say all this crazy shit, and then you get so many people that are just like breaking down and crying on this show when they find out the truth about a lot of these crazy situations. And oh my god, this show is just so good. There was this one guy I can't remember what it was he said, but he said something stupid like, "Either I am or I am it." So if you recognize that guy, they were all going to vote. Uh, in Imran or something like that off I think and then this guy says something stupid at the very end like they were almost done with the discussion and he kind of butted in and he says something fucking crazy and everybody was like huh <laughs> like everybody voted for that guy saved Enron or whatever his name was <laughs> it was just like you get these crazy characters on there that just fuck up and it's I'm trying to think of some other ones besides that psychic lady uh, oh, the uh, the recruitments are crazy because like some shows you'll have like six traders and the original traders have been like found out and there's not, nobody that was originally a trader is even there anymore. Um, some of them it's like they bury people alive and three different teams will get maps, but all the maps have flowers in the middle, so you could just go straight to the end. But I think you have to get a key or something, so you could just take some lock picks or something with you. You could just, oh, and the one where they roll the barrels up the hill. Why did nobody figure out, like, instead of, like, being, leaning over and pushing these barrels up these hills, and just, like, wearing yourself out, get a stick and, like, stick it into the side of the barrels with some, about two people, and just push it with a stick. Like in the little, the thing in the jigs on the end of a barrel. Oh, the fucking best. Oh, I forgot. In the UK season one, right after they lined up, the two people that thought they were going to lose... She says, I'll take you at your word. Go ahead and leave. <laughs> like, you think you're going to lose? Okay, you lose. And then everybody's like, oh my God, I can't believe we they come all this way. She's going like, to kick them out. So then like episode five, they're in this church. And you got to like solve this riddle. And you like ask somebody to give you this gold for all these church members and masks. And at the end, it's those two fucking guys. And they're back. She's like, they're coming back to the show. But you don't know if they're coming on as a faithful or a traitor. So now you really have no idea how many traitors there are. If you're trying to keep track of it. And then you can kind of figure out, like, well, if they pick traitors, are they going to pick, like, three men, three women, two women and a man, two men and a woman? And or are they going to pick an old person to throw in the mix? Because they're not going to pick all young people. And if you get rid of all the young people, then you might not have anybody to do the challenges towards the end game because you need to make the money. So you kind of want to keep the younger people around just because they're stronger. And then this one gay guy got real mad about that because he was like, I'm fit. And I'm like, 
50 years old and I'm like pissed off. <laughs> the gay characters are the best. I mean, I was just go through some of these pictures and find out the, the crazy. This guy, it was really memorable. This guy's from The Bachelor, so nobody really suspected him, and then they recruited him as a traitor. This is not really spoilers, because you know who the traitors are the whole time. It's never like you're confused about trying to figure out who's who. It's just the tension and the drama of, like, can they figure it out? Yeah... This guy and this girl, that's the two that were a couple. And then this guy, he, he reminded me of that guy from Hannibal Lecter. And this guy, he has his own podcast now where he talks about the traitors. Uh, this girl, Lalissa, I liked her a lot, but she kind of got found out first. Uh, this woman here, they had this like amusement park mission where they said like, who's the most two-faced? <laughs> they said this woman. They said, who is like... Uh, most likely to be a traitor or something like that. And they said this woman, but then when they went to vote, nobody would vote for her. Like, why did you all say you thought she was the most suspect and you nobody would vote for her? Let's see, this is the Australian guy. I'm not really sure, Roger or something like that. Uh, yeah, the way they filmed the traitors and their masks and stuff was different on this show too. They didn't just have hoods. They didn't take any vows. They had silver instead of gold because the Australian money is maybe worth half as much as the dollar is because they had like a quarter of a million instead of 125000 So I guess it was like Australian dollars. What is this one? Brandy Glanville. I don't know what that is. Who's Brandy Glanville? That's not the New Zealand one, is it? It's just Hollywood. I have to look that up in a minute. This guy right here, Paul, he was really good. Nobody suspected him. This guy here was in a car wreck. He has these scars. This guy, he came on saying like, oh, I've got a lot of ideas of who the traitors are. Like, I'm not going to say, but I think I figured it out. Voted him off first thing. He was the very first person to get eliminated because he said too much. That's the gay guy that I was talking about that was supposedly super athletic. Who's this guy? Oh, that's another gay guy. That's another... No, that's Imran. This guy... He seemed like he was... He was hanging out with old people more than you would expect, so, like... Women probably like him. Who's that? A BMX athlete. Oh, yeah. He was, like, the strategy... He was, like, a gamer or game developer or something like that, so he kind of, like new game theory you'd imagine yeah all these characters are so good this woman here she like always had these really good theories about who the traitors were and she was mostly right and everybody's like that's just Maddie she's crazy nobody would believe her so I'm like I don't know she seems like she would be a good woman to like date and bring home to mom like super open like an open book and honest but then also she's just like, it would drive you crazy after a while. It's kind of like Luna Lovegood from the Harry Potter. Just like one of those personalities. And they had a dwarf on the show. The UK. I don't know what it is about people in the UK. Every TV show in the UK. They always have people that are, I don't even know what you would call it. Like not retarded, but people that have missing limbs. Dwarves. Uh, spinal bifida or like, or like muscular dystrophy there's this comedian named Roche not Roisin what's her name Roxy or something like that Rosie Rosie something in the UK she's like super famous over there apparently I have no idea what the fuck she even says like she just says a bunch of shit it's like and then like, what the hell are you talking about how are you famous it's like a deaf person's voice but she's not deaf just like <laughs> I don't know what she has. What do you have? This one got voted off first. She could have been cool, but she's like too feisty. Alyssa Chan, that's her last name. Alyssa Chan. This one was a traitor, but she was like an older woman. Yeah, there was like two season one and season two of the UK. There was a woman that had no hand. How do you find two women with no hands? 
one of the missions, they tied him up to a post, and she's like, oh, I guess it's lucky that I don't have a hand, because you could untie yourself with her nub. Everybody else was, like, stuck tied to these poles. I guess they would have still been tied there if she hadn't, uh, if she had both of her hands. So, I don't know where it is about the UK doing that. This old woman lasted a long time because nobody wanted to vote her off. Anyway, I think I've covered everything so far. Canadian show was good. The host was weird. Uh, the UK was the best, most drama, best music. The US version was pretty good, but not as memorable. And the Australian version was pretty awesome. Um, and then season two of the US is probably going to be good, I'm imagining. So check it out. I watch it on this site called fmovies.to, fmoviesz, s and then the z, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I might be on later to stream some Enshrouded, and I've got a book haul back here getting ready to be made. I'm waiting on one more book from it. And that's it.